So welcome to the, uh, the, the video uh, in regards to uh, the physical backgrounds of electrocardiogram. We're not really going to discuss electroencephalography just yet. It's going to take us a little while before we get to it. And really, what I really want to do is not teach you a lot of bit of anatomy or physiology. What I really want to do is I want to take this little thing and make it look like something that you can understand. And if you can't really understand this, it will just end up looking like this. So this is really what I want to do. And all I'm going to do here is review things that you may, you may be asked about in biophysics. So this is in regards to passing a biophysics exam or excelling in it, but not an anatomy class or physiology. So we're just going to review just basic anatomy of the heart. And we know that action potential travels in certain directions, very well orchestrated. So we're going to look at what direction is it going in the heart. And this is really what we're going to do. And I'm, I promise not to use any, uh, any complex statements or definitions. I'm going to keep it simple. So let's do that. What we really need to know about the heart, and we're keeping it to the very bare essentials, is that we have here the sinus node. And the sinus node is really the pacemaker the pacemaker. It gives the initial electric excitability to get the action potential going in a very synchronized way. And these are the atria of the heart. Basically we have the uh, right atrium and the left atrium, plural for atria. And right here we have what we call the AV node. And the AV node just basically takes the electrical excitability and moves it from the atria to the ventricles. In case you're wondering, oh, well, wait, why can't, why can't the action potential just go from here to here? Why does it have to go through the AV node? Well, we're, we're going to talk about it, but basically there's some sort of fibrous tissue here that doesn't conduct uh, action potential very well. So action potential will have to go through the AV node, and it's really well designed to do that. Here we have the bundle of Hiss. This is a bundle of Hiss, and all you really need to know about, about these bundle of his and the different bundle branches. This is the left bundle branch and the right bundle branch. And all you really need to know about these is they conduct electricity really, really quickly. And we're going to talk about this. And this is the, the myocardium septum, or just the septal, septal, septal myocardium, which is just a tissue in between the two bundle branches. And we're, we'll see why we need it. And then, obviously, we have the two ventricles, the right ventricle, and the left ventricle. And really, when you think about it, this is, this is all you really need to know. And I haven't really put, put forth any, any words that are very, that are very uh, alien to you. So I'm just going to keep it simple. And if you know this, you know all you need to know about understanding this little, this little electrocardium curve and turn it into this from this whole thing. So let's get started. Let's get started. Now, what, what I really want to know is, first of all, I know that, and if I told you, if I told you that, that action potential travels in a very, very distinct way in, in the heart, it's not just going from here to here and that's it, or from the right to left, or from top to bottom. It has a very distinct path. And you may ask, why do we need this very distinct path? Well, it just so happens that these these atria need to contract downwards. They need to contract downwards to get blood flowing outside of the heart. And what we really need to know is that these, these ventricles need to contract upward. They need to contract upward to get blood flowing outside of the heart. This is really what's important. And if you're wondering how that looks, I found a nice YouTube video. And it looks kind of like this. We have the contraction of the atria and then the contraction of the ventricles and they both contract the opposite ways. And this is really what's important to understand and as far as why. Why is there such, such nice synchronized, synchronized uh, conduction in the heart? So first of all, what's going to happen, I'm going to, again, keep it very simple. We have the, SN, the sinus node that gives us a kickstart. It gives us some sort of excitability. And you can imagine that it travels everywhere in every direction. It travels in every direction travels in every direction. And it depolarizes the atria. 
And what's important to understand is that we're going to talk about what direction, what direction does this event take. And if we look at this event, I'm just going to switch colors here. If we took it, take a look at this electrical event and we sum up, uh, let me switch colors here, and we sum up all of these vectors because in physics we can do that. We can sum up all of these vectors and ask, what's, what, what would it look like? What are all these little vectors going to look like? And if I add them up, and this is the first electrical activity, I'm going to write depolarization, depolarization of the atria. And if I take a look at how this vector looks, it looks a little bit like this, kind of like in that direction, because I add up, I add up all these, all these vectors, and I would, I would get something along the lines of this, of this general direction, of this general direction. So this is the, I would say, the integral vector that we add up. This is the big major vector that we add up. And we already discussed that this fibrous tissue here. This fibrous tissue does not conduct electricity very well. It does not conduct electricity very well. Which really means that the AV node, the AV node here, has a monopoly over the, uh, the action potential. So everything would have to go through the AV node. So what we're going to have is depolarization of the AV node. And because the AV node is such a small, small tissue, we wouldn't really be able to read that, that activity. But it is going to be another activity. We have depolarization of the AV node depolarization of the AV node, and then what happens? Then what happens? Well, we have the, uh, the bundle of His and the two bundle branches. What's interesting to understand is that these bundle branches are insulated. They're insulated, let's just say, like, like electricity cables. They have insulation around them that protects them from the outer environment. And we're going to understand that we need to stimulate, and just we talked about this, we need to stimulate the ventricles from the, from the bottom top from the bottom to the top. So we wouldn't want it to prematurely, to prematurely uh, excite the ventricles. We want to excite them from the bottom to the top. So we have insulation here. We have insulation here. Very good. And we also have insulation here. What's important to understand is that the septum in the middle, there's the septum, the myocardial septum in the middle here. And this tissue is not very well insulated from the left from the left bundle branch here. This means that if I am uh, an electric, or rather if I'm an action potential that travels down this left bundle branch, I can actually escape and polarize this septum here. So this is what's going on. So the second event is I have the depolarization that occurs from this left bundle branch to the septum here. I have I have these little lines, and hopefully, let me switch colors here to make it a little bit more visible. I have these, these lines, these lines, no, let's do black, there we go. We have these lines here, and this is my next event. Basically, I have the left bundle branch getting signals here, getting these yellow signals propagating down it, but this, this tissue here in the middle is not very well insulated from this left bundle branch, so it's able to polarize it. So this is really the next event. It's the depolarization of the septum. Ah, I can just write it down. Depolarization of the, I would say, the septal myocardium. Septal, septal myocardium. And if you don't really, if you don't really know or understand, what is this? What, do, what, do, what does he mean? It doesn't really, it doesn't really, you don't really need to know in order to understand the EKG. You just need to know where the signal is going. Here it's going in that general direction. And here, where does it go? It's going in that general direction. If I, if I drew, if I took all of these little vectors and I drew an integral vector from them, I sum them up, I see this little vector here. So this is, this is a small vector in that general direction. And why, and why don't we have a vector here? Well, we already said that the AV node depolarization is a very small event, and we don't really read it on the outside if you compare it to the entire size of the heart. So what's the next stage? Well, the next stage is a very, very big event. The next stage is a very big event. We have all of these, oh, all of these. Hopefully the Skype is not in the way too much. We have all of these bundle branches depolarizing, depolarizing the ventricle. And this is, a really, this is really the major event now. This is a really a major event. And the, uh, the propagation of the action potential is just going every which way now, through, 
to the ventricles in this way. And if I add up all these vectors, if I add up all of these vectors, what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to get this general direction, this general direction. And, and, and understand that this, this vector that I'm adding, all these, all these black vectors, if I'm adding them, I'm going to get a considerably bigger vector than if I'm adding all of these. That's because the atria are considerably smaller than the two ventricles, considerably smaller. There you go. So this is going to be the fourth event, is going to be the depolarization of the ventricles. Ventricles. And we're going to get this general, this general direction is going to be considerably bigger. And if you're wondering, hey, if the middle of the heart, if the middle of the heart is right here, the middle of the heart is right here, and it's, this, is, this is where the middle of the heart is pointing, why is the vector pointing over there? Well, if you want to think about it, the left ventricle is considerably more muscular and bigger. So it's going to pull this middle vector slightly towards, towards it. So don't, don't worry about it. You don't really need to know all of that. And the next electrical event is if you're wondering, all right, we have all of this tissue now depolarized. All of this tissue is now depolarized. Perfect. And then the next part that needs to be depolarized, obviously, this whole ventricle is going to contract in this direction. In this direction. So we also have these parts on the sides that also need to be depolarized. So you can, you can look at it as the outskirts of the ventricles. I'm not really going to give the scientific names because you're not going to remember them. But really what I need is to have the action potential travel, travel in this way to get to the very edges or the outskirts and, and get all of this tissue polarized as well. I'm just going to switch colors here and get all of this tissue, all of this tissue polarized as well. And this is the next event, the next electrical event, the depolarization of, let's just say, the, the edges. And there's a name for it, but I'm not going to bother with it. The edges of the ventricles. Now, we already discussed that there was, let's switch colors again arbitrarily. We already discussed that there was a depolarization here. Very good. And then there was a depolarization in the septal myocardium. And then there was a depolarization here of the ventricles and a depolarization of these two stages. What happens with repolarization? We know that we need to have repolarization. And it just so happens that the repolarization of the atria, of the two atriums, it takes place while this tissue here of the ventricle is being depolarized. So it's kind of taking place at the same time. So this event is going to take place alongside this event. So as you can imagine, first of all, we have depolarization here, depolarization here, and then we have depolarization here. And right around this spot, when this gets depolarized, this tissue gets repolarized. But don't worry about that. Don't worry about that just now. What happens about the repolarization of the major ventricles? The, ma the ventricles are a major part of the heart. What happens with their depolarization? And their depolarization happens from, well, generally, from the edges, from the edges here towards the top, towards the top. Just like the wave of, uh, of depolarization that caused contraction from the bottom to the top because we need to pull out, to pull out the, the blood this way, the repolarization wave, the repolarization wave happens in the same manner. It happens from the edges here, from the edges here in that direction. So if I were to draw, I'm just going to make it a little bit, a little bit wider so it'll be easier to see. This is the general direction. This is the general direction of the, of the repolarizing wave in the heart. Very good. And let's just try and, and put it all together. Let's just try and pull it all together. I'm just going to use the one image above. And you know what? I'm just going to add this as well because it's kind of important. And the sixth event is the repolarization of the ventricles. And if you're wondering, ventricles. And if you're wondering, why did I, didn't I put the repolarization of the atrii as well? Well, basically, I'm just going to touch on it really, really basically now. When the repolarization of the ventricle, of the atria take place, take place here, when they take place, it's a considerably smaller electrical event than the event taking place here, which is a depolarization of the ventricle. So we're not really going to read this smaller event because we're going to read a considerably bigger event here. So that's why I'm not writing it here. And that's why we are also not going to see it on our EKG, but don't worry about it just yet. Let's try and, and put everything together. Let's try and put everything together. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you how this works. We first of all have the SN node 
the SN node firing, and the general direction is going to be in that direction. Obviously, we have very small vectors, but we're going to add them up to this vector here. And then the bundle of his gets depolarized really, really quickly, but it just so happens that this tissue in the middle, which is the septomyocardium, and it's not really important that you remember the name, the septomyocardium gets, gets depolarized from this left bundle branch, and the general direction of the vector is going to be like so. And then we're going to have a very, a very large depolarizing event of the entire ventricle, and it's going, to be, it's going to be in this general direction. And then we're going to have the edges or the outskirts of the ventricles depolarized, and, and, we're going to get, and we're going to get the general direction of these vectors. Or if I add them up, it's going to look like this. And then we have the, de the repolarizing wave, and I'm going to switch colors. The depolarizing wave is going to come in every direction here, in every direction here. And if we add all these vectors up, we're going to get this major, this major direction uh, for the repolarization. And if you understand that, and take your time and rewind if you need it, if you understand that you're well on your way, and I'm going to use, I'm going to use the same YouTube animation and this is basically going to show us how we have the different waves going through. So the, S, the sinus node is going to fire first. Anytime now, it's going to fire first and cause depolarization of the atria. And then we're going to have the depolarization of the ventricles. We're going to have the depolarization of the ventricles here. Very good. And then we're going to have the repolarization traveling from the bottom to the top, so to speak, from the... Uh, from the bottom here, from the apex to the base. Very good. And this is enough, and if you understand that, and again, take your time and rewind if you need it, if you understand that, you're well on your way to understanding electrocardiogram. See you on the next video.